What's up guys, it's Parallax Abstraction and welcome to episode 3 of Behind the Games, Casual Chats with Game Developers. I've been meaning to connect with this gentleman for quite some time actually since I first took a look at uh, the game he worked on on the channel. So today I'm talking to Frank Washburn of Suppressifier Games, the designer, programmer and a uh, number, number of other hats he wears. Cat welcome herder. to the show, Frank. <laughs> I, I heard cats, that's what I do. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, oh. no. So he, uh, yeah. So you are, uh, well, you're one of the members of Suppressifier Games, but sort of the, uh, at least from the the number of titles on your website, kind of the lead on Blood Alloy Reborn. Yeah. And uh, though, yeah, this is, uh, you guys have kind of an interesting story, and that's why I thought it'd be really fun to to chat with you today. Uh, so basically. Um, Suppressive Fire is a, uh, according to your website, is a team that has quite a, an interesting mix of people in it. So you're made up of students, and also because you're based in Boston, of course, you have ex Harmonics people working with you because every yep. dev in Boston does these days, it seems. Yep. Um, and yeah, you've got a quite a quite an interesting mix of people, and the story behind your team is rather interesting because Blood Alloy was originally envisioned as kind of a a larger game that you guys ran a Kickstarter for, which actually didn't end up funding, mm -hmm. but you decided to sort of uh, scale it down a little bit and sort of re-envision it as Blood Alloy Reborn, which is the game I, I took a look at, which is more of a uh, sort of a smaller scale arena combat game. If uh, you guys haven't seen that, definitely go uh, check out the video for that because it's, a, it's a, a pretty interesting title. But yeah, I thought you'd be uh, you guys would be pretty cool to chat about because you've had kind of a, an interesting history. So I guess... Like we, I said, you guys are sort of a, a very eclectic mix of developers. So, like, sort yeah. of, what are the the origins of you guys, and how did you how did you guys get into game development? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, uh, my so I my mom's my mom's Korean, and if you know anything about stereotypical Asian parents, it's like you know, oh, you're gonna be a doctor or a lawyer, or I'm gonna <laughs> kill you. And so, you know, I went to college, and like when I was in college, I was like. Fuck that being doctor or lawyer. My big rebellion in college was going to environmental science. And I was like, yeah, environmental oh, science. Damn. You can't tell me what to do. And then my little brother, he's uh, two years younger than me. He had the revelation of like, dude, like what are all the jobs that I've done? I've He's done can like he, he and I both have done summer spent doing cancer research and labs. He was worked retail. He's worked in the food industry. And what he did is he's like, dude, what do I actually like? Comics, movies and video games. I'm going to do that. And like it just dawned. Him. I was like, wait, that's even possible. You can just you can just choose that. And so my last year of college, I spent like all my efforts trying to figure out like how I could get into uh into gaming and it turned out that uh you know right out of college i had two jobs lined up one of them was going to be doing environmental science work for the government uh you know because the environment is a hot trash fire and that would have been like meaningful and productive work and i've been like man i'm making the world a better place every day um and it would have been paid paid really well really prestigious or i could have earned Twelve dollars an hour testing video games for harmonics on Rock Band Two, and I was like, "Well, it's well, not I mean, like duh. the environment's gonna." Yeah, well, and I was like, "It's not like the environment's gonna get better," you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I said, the education. If I want to go back to that, I can still do that. So yeah, I went to I I worked at harmonics, and I pretty much never looked back. Um, so that's that's how I got my start, and um, you know, I spent five years at harmonics, uh, worked on like eight or nine titles while i was there we're i was gonna say if you if you were around the rock band 2 era you got there at sort of the height of their yeah, like when they yeah. were really at the big time the, the height of Har harmonics is big time and the height of uh the bitter rivalry between harmonics and guitar hero because yeah. that was that was really that was really a, a treat to live through um but yeah no that that, that was really great and har working at harmonics taught me like an enormous amount of stuff um about video game, uh, video game development, and um, and it came to the point where uh, you know when you're working in AAA, it can be very very difficult to uh, climb up through the ranks and get out of QA and get into design. Um, mm. And so it came to the point that you know me and Harmonix split ways, and I actually started uh, paying the bills, uh, teaching teaching kids. And uh, but I very much wanted to do my own, uh, continue doing video game work, and so I you know just started dicking around with uh, with JavaScript and made made a little uh, demo with a stick figure walking around shooting things because um one of my favorite uh one of my favorite games um as a kid was this game called Abuse. Um, mm, was, yeah. Yeah. So like like Abuse was literally one of the first games I can ever remember that had was a 2D game that had WASD and mouse control, and just yeah. always I just thought it was like really smart how. 
they um, they had like the character posed in such a way that it looked really dynamic and it just looked natural and cool how he was able to like aim in any direction whether you're, no matter what you're moving and just the the sprites all lined up and so I was just like oh, I wanna I wanna make I want to make abuse the game, but like in a cohesive world, because like uh, the the art style, the story, everything about abuse was awesome. But like the levels were very, very like super segmented, you know? Like there were just like levels with like big glowing hearts, and it was like a very, very gamey and not super immersive. I wanted a game yeah. that was like abuse, but like a Metroidvania with bosses and like a persistent story and story events. I was like, oh yes, that's what I want to make. And so that's yeah. what I kind of just started, um, you know, uh, gunning my tweaking the prototype uh into and then gradually i just started you know trawling reddit and twitter for trying to find people who are interested and we got like you know a lucky plucky band of misfits together who are all <laughs> passionate about one idea and we wound up uh you know launching the kickstarter um and i wanted to launch the kickstarter when i did because i was getting married in october and i didn't want to wait any longer because the xbox one and the playstation 4 were releasing later that year and i was mm. like there's if i release a kickstarter right when new consoles are coming out that's gonna sink me so i was saying i can't have the kickstarter going on during my wedding because that's just gonna make me like implode from stress so i timed yeah. everything out we launched the kickstarter and the whole picture of the Kickstarter is basically what I described, you know, 2D pixel art uh, platformer with cool combat and like persistent world, cyberpunk, very gritty. And uh, in the first week, we saw really, really great momentum. We uh, like we had a, like a fifty thousand dollar goal and we made like twelve thousand dollars in one week. Mm. And then two things happened, one of which I should have planned for the other, which I there's no one. No one could see for thing. Number one, Grand Theft Auto five released. Oh, mm. man. How did I not plan for that? Oh thing my! Number, <laughs> thing number two, the Kickstarter for Hyper Light Drifter launched, and yes. that was the one that like I was like that what stole is this? all the media thunder. I remember. I was that. like, what is this game that everyone's talking about? And I clicked on the link and I watched their video, and my stomach just my heart just fell into my stomach, and then I clicked the back this project button. I was like, it's so beautiful. It's oh amazing. <laughs> and like, you know, the like Hyper Light Drifter has come out, like much to great acclaim. I haven't gotten around to playing it yet, but like just, mm -hmm. just looking at it is just like so it's beautiful. Insane. I'm very it's happy. so gorgeous. I'm so happy those guys did such a great job. They I, Like I, I say, like they, they deserve every element of success that they've gotten. But mm -hmm. unfortunately for me, Grand Theft Auto Five and Hyper Light Drifter, our our momentum was like, shh, and then we just flat. Yeah, and then kaboom, real yeah. Hard. And then within Oof. like six hours of Hyper Light Drifter's Kickstarter, we had twenty people withdraw their own pledges. And I was like, what? Oh. What? Why are people? Why am I getting these emails? People saying they withdrawing their pledge. I <laughs> Don't emailed some leave. of them, and I was like, why are you withdrawing your pledges? Is there anything we can do? Like what? Blah, blah. And they were like, I'm sorry, you know, money's tight, which everyone has the right. Like, I'm money's tight for me too. Money's but, like, tight and Hyper Light tight, Drifter. And I'm pledging to Hyper Light Drifter. <laughs> I'm like, I don't really have a response to that. So like, yeah. you know, we we finished our campaign at like 17 out of uh 17 out of 50. Mm -hmm. Um which was which was tough. It was it was disappointing, but there were a couple things we took away from that. And ultimately, I'm fucking glad we failed. Like cuz if we had succeeded So here's what the failure did for us. One, it reaffirmed my belief that there was something there. We had something. We would not have gotten that initial, like, really strong, amazing momentum there um, if, if, if our idea was just shit. We had something there. You know, it was a very poor timing, and, like, we just got outshined by Hyper Light Drifter's um, amazingness. But, like, we mm -hmm. had something there. There was, so that, there was that comfort. And two... Um, I totally forgot what two was. So we, we, we had, well, no, 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 no. Two is people like with Kickstarter, there people, you know, you, you read the comments, you see what people are saying and people had a lot of sometimes harshly worded, but they, people had a lot of feedback for us. And sure. so we, we took that. We were like, we, there's obviously so much there that we can improve. We have to, we have some, we have a core element here that, that, that is valuable but there's so much more polish that we that we need to do to this you know like one of my pixel artists um khalif you know he was a college student at the time and we were working in game maker and he was like frank when are you gonna implement particles and i was like ah, i don't have time for that i have time to you know make enemies blah, blah blah and then um after the kickstarter failed uh i wound up um i found this talk by jw of vlambeer and this mm -hmm. talk is if you're interested in like the crafting of video games at all, it's amazing. It's called just you go on YouTube, just look up the art of screen shake. 
and it's like a 45 minute talk and he uh he has like a little dinky like student level project where there's a little stick guy walk around just go bah, 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 and shoots out bullets and kills enemies and it, it just like looks like total garbage and then one by one he goes through like 50 or 60 little tiny like detail features like one of them is like oh when you shoot your gun a little shell casing pops out another one is like oh when a guy dies like uh a little blood spatter appears. Another one is like, oh, just lowering the health of enemies and just increasing the number of enemies. All he does, like 50, and he just goes and implements one by one of these. And you're like, by like the 20 or the, like the 10th or 20th feature, you're like, wow, this game like feels like a good game. And by the <laughs> time the game is done, you're like, this is a Vlambeer game that is awesome. Oh my God. Just <laughs> watching him just like shoot, like shoot massive bullets everywhere and everything is exploding. And I was just like, this feels so. Like and so watching that talk, changed the next six months of our development and all of our development was solely developed uh, was solely focused on um those features about game feel like so you know like doing a um like a camera shake like how do you do camera shake you can make your camera shake up and down which feels like an impact of something slamming or you do it left or right which is a little jarring so maybe that's good for teleporting that kind of stuff um, hmm. And just doing all, like, cameras, um, one thing that I noted, um, you know, uh, in, in the Batman games, what's the coolest moment of any Batman game is when you are about to punch the last guy out, and it does that awesome camera pan, and yeah. Batman's face just, so like, mm -hmm. and you're like, yeah. oh, so, there's so much cool stuff you can do with camera stuff, so in Blood yeah. Alley, anytime you land um, a melee attack, it slightly zooms the camera in. It's not a lot, but it's enough to be like, oh, yeah, that feels really cool. Um, I obviously with 2D art you can't do like sweeping camera rotations and everything, but like yeah, sure. that, there's there's all that stuff you can do. And so for the next six months, we just like we didn't do any new enemies, nothing like that. It was just making the game feel a lot cooler. And um, throughout that process, you know, uh, you know, we had albeit a fi failed Kickstarter, but we had like you know clearly the gumption to like present something, and we were able mm -hmm. to get like some new team members. Some new team members were like. Um, uh, we, we lost some old team members, which is fine. You know, so we had we had uh, some people who were very talented, um, and then the Kickstarter failed, and they were like, "That's fine. I'm bowing out." Slash, uh, if I have to hear the phrase "constructive criticism" ever again, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> I'm like, I totally understand. Yeah. I mean, you hear from other developers be, too, right? Yeah. Even ones who've had successful Kickstarters that how unbelievably stressful a Kickstarter yeah. is. Like yeah. one of the most stressful it's, things you'll ever go through, right? It's it's awful. I would literally yeah. have nightmares about it because like the first like day or two days was like amazing because you just get email. Your, your inbox just floods so-and-so back to your game. Sorry. And you're like, oh. And then when that slows down, you're like, no, 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 no. You can't, you can't, no, I yeah, need momentum. Me, give me the more, give me the emails, give me the emails. And I would wake yeah. up, I would like wake oh. up thinking, oh, run over to the computer and check. No, no email. Like it was, yeah. it that's was terrible. rough. Yeah. It was terrible. Really rough. But, um, but you know, like it was, it was that, it was that faith of like that we had something there and the faith of seeing the product improve as we like aggressively polished every single, uh, bit of feedback negative feedback that we got but you know what came came to it was like hey our kickstarter failed we didn't we don't we don't have any we don't have any money so like i'm still having to teach kids to um to pay the bills all my sure. other guys are college students so they're juggling uh the college students are working full-time like doing graphic design or whatever so they're juggling 40-hour jobs or they're juggling like being a college student and stuff um, mm -hmm. Like, how are we going to make the time and, like, effort and people are going to pay, like, rent and everything? And so what we did is we basically just um, – we had to scope the game down. It's like, oh, yes, I want to make a Metroidvania. But, like, I was thinking, like, what if we scope – because if, if we if we want to make a Metroidvania, that would probably, like, given the rate of work with no money involved, like, you know, you think about um, Dust – uh, that dust game that was uh, the the kind of furry animated yeah, game. Yeah, Dust you know Elysian. Yeah, yeah. Elysian Tale, that was yeah. that, that was, was like one, my number four game of that year. I yeah, love that it game. Was, it was one guy driving himself insane for like yes. five or six years. You know, like yeah. whereas literally like, went from not even knowing how to program to making yeah. that all by himself, yeah. and he's it's still a, alive, which I don't yeah. know how he did it. Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley, made yeah. by basically one or two people, and again mm -hmm. just making themselves insane over years. Great success, yeah. but like. You know, like at this point, like I was, I was married now, and you know, like possibly starting family, which now has happened. Everyone else, like it's tough to do when you're working remote and when you don't have those, uh, 
that that those um, fortunate circumstances where you're able to mm -hmm. dedicate yourself fully to that. So we were like, we have sure. to scope down. And so the idea was like, okay, well, what's the like minimum viable product here? And um, what was great is I actually that GDC I um, uh, I caught Rami Ismail of Vlambeer in the hallways, and this was the day Luftrausers launched. So Rami Ismail oh, was wow. clearly having a very stressful day, but <laughs> Luftrausers had launched, and I'd spent all night playing loot browsers on my PlayStation Vita be like, this yeah. is amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. And I saw Rami Ismail. And I was like, Rami, can you give me feedback? Oh my Dude. Game. I have a, I have a <laughs> game that involves guns and swords. Can you give me feedback? And so Rami Ismail, like one GDC is crazy busy Two, He had just launched a game, but yeah. he sat down and he took like an hour and a half to play our crappy Whoa. little demo a blood alley and he'd like wow some guys will play it and be like oh yeah i like it that's the worst thing you can hear that means like oh yeah, yeah it's good you know that that means like, i have not that that means it's passable but i have nothing to say about it <laughs> right right rami yeah. ismail like analyzed every single facet of it Jesus. and it was like oh this feels good this feels good this feels like oh this is real good but this is problematic i don't like this and um and it was just like really amazing and i just came out of that like with all these notes and um fundamental to that uh was um at the time and for for kickstarter uh we had this like slide boosting mechanic where you could like rocket along the floor basically ripped straight out of vanquish i love platinum games games and yes. vanquish was, i just fucking love vanquish and they better make yes. a vanquish too oh god my, i wish they, they would vanquish <laughs> too and oh my god uh zone of the enders 3 needs to be given to platinum games to develop Platinum yeah. games. Konami, games. you're not making games anymore. Just <laughs> hand it over to them. Give and it. Sega, you don't give a shit about Vanquish. Just give yeah. it to them for give a taste of beer or something. <laughs> give it to Va give it to Platinum. Oh, and so yes. I love Vanquish so much. I was like, yeah, I'm just I'm basically just gonna fucking stole that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Rami Ismail pointed out that you know when you're zooming along the floor real fast because we didn't have a time dilation mechanic like Vanquish does. He was like, you know, it it feels fun, but it's fucking hard as shit to you know hit anything. Um, and I was like, yeah. "Fuck yeah!" There's the I, I need a I need to fucking think about how do you how do you solve that? And then my <laughs> buddy uh, my buddy Alex Gold um, I have everything to thank uh, him about um, because he'd play the game and he was like, "You know, sliding on the floor is cool. Why not slide on ceilings and up the walls?" And I was like, "Oh, you're a fucking genius! That's <laughs> slide on everything! Yeah, slide on everything!" <laughs> and then like as luck would have it, Metal Gear Rising would come oh. out just a few uh, like a few months later Speaking and there's of that platinum oh. yeah yeah and lovely so, so there's that moment in Mogir rising where um where raiden like he sees the the arm girl like across the buildings and he's on top of a skyscraper but rather than like jump down to the ground he like jams his sword into the wall and just kind of rides it down i was like that yep. i don't want to make a game <laughs> with that as a game mechanic and so that was that that became uh it out like this idea of like going super fucking fast and the way i i solved um the uh the problem of like not being able to hit shit is like um you know in mario kart you like butt slide and then your exhaust smoke turns black and it charges up and then you let it go and you get that little boost i was like oh yeah. what if you slide literally to charge up like a homing blast so you're encouraged to slide if you're like if the enemies are like swarming around you you know, um, just like I also like it, it, it turned out like just uh, it turned out that I hadn't played it in years. But Zone of the Enders 2 does something very similar. I was like, oh, shit. Like you can use that slide mechanic to not only use it as an escape thing, but also to charge up like a homing attack. So it solved those two things at once. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just stuff started iterating like and, um, and you know, we started uh, working our asses off on enemies and then a scoring system. And uh, yeah, fucking three years, three really hard years went by, <laughs> you know, juggling, uh, you know, like getting married up. Uh, uh, my pixel artist, Khalif, he also got married. He, then he graduated oh, wow. from college. Our other guy from graduating college, our other guy moved to Jordan. Like so much has happened with the team. We picked up a, a pixel artist in Vietnam. Uh, apparently wow. the, guy, the, the guy lives across the street from the guy who made Flappy Bird. Um, <laughs> so, well, that's weird. What yeah. are the freaking odds of that? It, it, it's it's funny because he says that uh, the Vietnam game industry, like, because like, it was this way before, but apparently also be explicitly because Flappy Bird, like, the yeah. Vietnam game industry is so focused on like aggressive monetization of freemium iOS apps because they're all like, yeah. oh yes, video game business. Let's make I a believe it. let's make a fun game, but like, it, well, really the emphasis is let's make a game that makes money through. Yeah. And so what I lucked out, he was like, uh, this guy on Twitter is tweeting this cyberpunk pixel stuff, and he seems to be making games for like the 
joy of making like fun adrenaline games. So he, yeah. he touched base with me. I was like, dude, you're a talented pixel artist. Yes, I want your shit. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, like the, you know, the team just just grew and shrank a few times, and um, and yeah, we want we wound up launching on Steam uh, in March, and so it's been out. Um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think I'm sure you you pointed this out in your reviews. You know, we we were missing Steam leaderboards and achievements and some other features that we really would like to have at launch. So, hilariously enough, very similar to my uh, dilemma with a Kickstarter and my wedding, uh, my son was due to be born in late March. And so I was like in a similar punch where I was like, oh my God, like never a dull my, moment. <laughs> yeah. When my son is born, how like my word is like, how am I supposed to like focus on like these critical features of Blood Alloy? <laughs> I need to get this game out. Like I, there's just everything my life is just designed so that everything stressful in my life happens yeah. like in the same month and it's, like everything happens in waves. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> and so so I was like fuck like I just I just have to get this game out. And so, yeah. um, you know, may, like maybe that was a mistake, but, you know, we're rolling, we're rolling with it. And, um, and you know, we, we launched the game and j- just very recently, we uh, right before the Steam summer sale, we, we got in Steam leaderboards and achievements and trading cards and all that shit is up. So, yeah. um, you know, right now, like, yeah, the game, the game is out. It's a, it's a limited, uh, it's a limited scope game. But like what I like, I obviously I'm biased as fuck, but like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy with, uh, with our soundtrack. Like if you, yes. well, if you, if any of you guys who are listening, if you love the Hotline Miami soundtrack, dude, we have Perturbator, GOST, Magic Sword from the Hotline uh, Miami Two soundtrack. We have Hells, those artists yes. on there, and so like I would catch myself when I was like, I would have to be like, fuck, there's like some weird bug where like this animation doesn't complete correctly and i'll be like okay like change the code and i would actually just find myself just playing it and like listening to the music be like yeah perturbator this feels i feel awesome uh, like and you know I that's kind that of stuff yeah that's kind of like what the the goal of what i what i wanted to um to give people like you know like the idea of like you can just like if you have like a couple minutes to kill and you just want to like feel awesome killing robots while you're jamming out to like perturbator um yeah. or dan terminus like dude just load a blood alloy and now that now that yeah. we have leaderboards i'm hoping you know that's some incentive just to humiliate and crush your friends get those <laughs> chivos and um absolutely and yeah because like yeah. um i think the addition know, of leaderboards is a really good one just because that's kind of what i said in my video is that it's it, because it's a score attack game it kind of very you know very well lends itself to yeah. that yeah and, and i uh, yeah and yeah. I, I understand that completely it's just yeah, yeah. and it's uh and it's, it's something that we definitely uh really want it and the, the next yeah. step we'll have to see this comes out um god damn it my, my dog is my dog what she does is she'll take her toy and she'll throw it down and she'll like roll on it and be like ah yeah. I'm so, happy. <laughs> so that's what she's doing yeah. now mine hasn't um, been for his walk yet i'm surprised he's not being crankier to be honest but what kind of dog do you have Oh, he's a Bernie's Mountain Dog Golden Retriever oh mix. He's, a, he's, he's like a he's a ninety pound gentle giant, but oh he's, my uh, God. He's, he's just Mountain chilling dogs. upstairs. Bernie's Mountain Dogs are so beautiful, but they have such tragically short lifespans. I know that's he's the mix, which is nice. So he yeah, has uh, he doesn't have any of the health problems, which yeah. is really nice. But yeah. We, yeah. we have a few pure, pure Bernieses around here, and they're the, yeah, they're the nicest dogs in the world. But I'm like, you probably yeah. won't live past eight, and that's yeah. a tragedy. That's so <laughs> sad because they're so wonderful. They anyway, really are. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's, um, no, it's yeah, interesting. The, 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 the next thing that we want to do is, um, you know, ho- like, uh, Steam Summer Sale is great because it gets so many people onto Steam, but then you're like, Oh, I'm competing against Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is now available for like <laughs> five dollars. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You know? So, like, we're so the publisher, our publisher is getting up to do some marketing and stuff. And what we're, what I really want to happen is because I ha- I have I have a fucking dev kit right in my closet. I want to get the game out on Vita because I feel like yeah. it's perfect for Vita. You know, because you're like just just that bite sized gameplay. Put your headphones. No, it is jam yeah. out like while you're waiting for the bus. Absolutely, or the that's a fantastic portable game. Honestly, yeah. So, do like, you have? Uh, I I know that your original scope for it was to get it out on uh basically all the current home machines is it actually right. out on consoles yet or is that still it's in not the out on consoles yet basically like okay, that's what it, i thought yeah there's there's a, there's a couple things one one i need a fucking vaca- <laughs> vacation from the game after well, yeah of course vacation for the game and uh you know taking care of my son um mm. and uh and but well, yeah, it's, all you it's, do is load it up in unity click the ps4 and xbox one buttons and hit compile that's I, all you need to do right <laughs> that's how ports work <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you because so, so the of, internet says. I'm told yeah, a lot of people think that that's actually like like <laughs> like let's let's be real. Unity definitely makes it a lot easier. A lot. I'm sure easier. it does. Yeah. But, um, 
but especially with a PlayStation Vita, like you can be very, very clever with a PlayStation Vita, but getting something to run on the Vita is really, really hard. Like, you know, like, and it's well, amazing. It's, you're that scaling stuff. your power down a lot, I guess, yeah. right? It, it, the Vita is like a very, very powerful iPhone, you know, and the yeah. iPhone can run some amazing shit, but there's yeah. a reason that like fucking uh, Killzone Mercenary is not on the Vita. Like the fact that yeah. Killzone Mercenary works on the PlayStation Vita is like whoever made those games, that's like, um, like if you if you uh, read or hear about the stories of uh, the program first NES and like Super Famicom programmers working with the shit that they had back then, like yeah. those guys had to be brilliant to get around those yeah. limitations of the hardware, you know. Yeah. And the Vita cramming Killzone Mercenary, like it's a, it's a pretty good game, you know, not amazing, yeah. but the fact that it's an it's a it looks stellar looking, for a portable game. Yeah, it's a great looking <laughs> FPS on the Vita. Like, oh my yeah. god, that whole team deserves like a standing round of applause. And you know, it was like, basically a launch game too, so they were doing it. They were learning yeah. everything sort of as they went, right? Yeah. But was, I've was, heard that before too from other indie developers who actually uh, a lot of indie developers who put stuff out on the Vita actually have contracted those ports out to other companies that yeah. kind of specialize in it because they're just like, yeah, twisting this thing to make it work on the Vita is too much work for us, so we're gonna let these guys do it. Right. Yeah, and that's that's something I've very much. If it comes to it, we may consider that ourselves. I'll have, I'll have to see um, how our performance looks um, because yeah. when I like it was like maybe a year and a half ago, I loaded up the game up on V. Now I was like, oh yes, the game's working on V. This is amazing. I load up our tutorial level. It's two frames it's a like, second. It's like. <laughs> Like yeah, like eight frames a second. I was like, oh, this well. is I don't. This is terrible. So like, <laughs> so yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. And if it comes out yeah. in Vita, I, I may have to contract that stuff out to um to a porting company. But like yeah. getting it out on PlayStation Four and Xbox One. Hopefully that won't that won't be too challenging. It's definitely not going to be hit a button, especially if we want to uh, get all that stuff with um with leaderboards because you know with yeah. the Steam Steam leaderboards. Versus console leaderboards, that's an entirely different API and system. Yeah. So You're hooking into someone else's tools at that yeah. point, and that gets things a little more interesting. But yeah. I would tend to agree with you, though, that, uh, you know, because the Vita, I've always, man, the Vita still makes me sad because I, I bought one of those things literally at launch, and I, yeah, I, I did too. I've I used got... it a lot. I still love the hell out of it, and it's become a really, really good portable indie box because yeah, Sony exactly. at this point is basically all like, yeah, there's some indie games coming out, and other than that, we're basically never going to speak of this again. And it's and it's, it's, it's so heartbreaking. I'm like, yeah, I like know. when uh, I like just a couple weeks ago, I was like, Risk of Rain comes out on Vita. I was like, what? I was explicitly oh, that's waiting perfect. for Risk. I was explicitly waiting for Risk of Rain to come on Vita. Yeah. Like they came out and they they mentioned like yes we want to put this on Vita. I'm like I'm waiting. I'm waiting yeah. to put it on Vita. And then uh Rogue uh Rogue Legacy. Rogue yeah. Legacy was I totally waited. I played the hell that. that's where I played I, it principally. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I was like yeah cuz you know you're like oh I'm going to go to bed. I'll just uh, lay with Rogue Legacy and you're like Do a couple up, like, runs of this and you're, you're like, like oh, oh why is God. the sun coming up? God damn it. <laughs> Just yeah. one more run. No, and, and it's and that's what it's become really, really great for is a is a it's a very good uh, very good indie game machine. And you know the fact that a lot of the games are you know buy it you know buy it once and everything syncs to PS4. If you want to yep. play it on your TV, yep. if you've got it or whatever, you know I think it's I I have always thought that that. It, the Vita is really good for that, and it, I always thought the best thing Sony could do for the Vita would be to find a way to like cut it down to like ninety nine bucks and then just say this is for indie games and yep. just. I think they could actually pitch it as pretty much exclusively an indie game device and actually do well with that idea if they could yeah. just get it cheap enough to and, do that. And give it enough uh, internal memory that you don't have to deal with that stupid proprietary memory. <sighs> that was the dumbest so, thing. So I was yeah, like, I was like, oh my god! Like the Vita had an uphill battle to climb as is, and that yes. was just like a really. T and I say this as a huge Vita fan. Yeah, fucking me too. love the Vita, you know. Yep. But it was just like that and even the 3DS. When Nintendo is not exactly known for open formats either, yeah. and even the 3DS uses micro SD cards, you know, so, like. So, like, <laughs> so I uh, so I played. Um, I'm a huge Monster Hunter fan. Mm -hmm. uh, I played fucking. 400 hours in the space of a single year of Monster Hunter Free Unite, uh, you know, Good PSP, Lord. but emulated on the Vita. And right. then uh, Sony fucking dropped the ball and they didn't, they, whatever they did, they didn't negotiate hard enough. And now they Nintendo, gave it to Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo has control of that franchise. And what's, what sucks about that is, um, I had uh, the 3DS XL Circle Pad Pro, this big fucking monster. This stupid, thing. yeah, yeah. But it, like, but it was it was it was actually quite comfortable, and so you know they yeah. they announced the the you know the silver 
3ds with a little little new nub in it and i was like yeah, oh yeah, yeah that's the one i'm gonna get that and dude that nub is just not very good it's, i heard it's doesn't it's not the same it's yeah. like i, I kinda, it's like one of those crappy laptop mice that they put in the middle of the keyboard yeah, that you're supposed it, to use your index finger with it that works, never works right yeah it works okay but yeah. like and from what i've heard that um the 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 new 3ds is powerful enough that it actually really does reduce loading times and stuff. But outside yeah. of that, I'm just like, dude, I really wish yeah. I had my honking, ugly <laughs> the 3DS XL yeah. Circle Pad Pro there because just as that thumbstick was so much more usable. But really? um, yeah. but yeah, apparently Monster Hunter Generations comes out in just a few weeks, and I had like yes. I fell I fell off the boat, man. I fucked up. <laughs> just everyone was playing Monster Hunter Four, and I was like dealing with other shit, so I couldn't. Yeah. So I, I I just barely got to high rank. And now there's oh, a yeah. new Monster Hunter game coming out. I'm like, how am I supposed to catch up? No. What do you expect me to do? Jesus. Yeah, just like, <laughs> how do you expect me to get through like 200 hours of content with a group of three or more people? Like, yeah. ah, in two weeks is terrible. This is unreasonable. Yeah. yeah. Now, as they said before, you know, Monster Hunter, it's a series I've never put much time in, but they always, they, I remember, especially with the, uh, the older PSP ones that had ad hoc Wi Fi, they were like, that's, yep. a, that's a game made for Japanese subways. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, no, you yeah, it's, it was ridiculous, and yeah. they even had the um, they had the what Monster Hunter Free New Night. They had the ad hoc simulator that you could either ho you could wire your PSP or PS Vita up to the PS3, and yes. your PS3 would like simulate would the ad hoc it. stuff, yeah. so you could effectively play online with other people. I was yes, like, I remember I, that. I, I I used that a lot. I got through Monster Hunter Free New Night with a lot of people I met on ad hoc simulator, and it was weird because like Monster Hunter, like it turns kind of into like an mmo where you meet people and then you're like oh you're a cool person and you have a mic and we'll talk and you're like i met this kid who was like a homeschooled like 16 year old kid in washington <laughs> state but he was actually like a really like smart articulate kid and he was good to play with i was like all right cool like yeah add to my psn friends Why list not? yeah we'll play together. Oh, yeah man. that's yeah. something else no, and it's and like I said, yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, but the games like Blood Alloy, where because one of the things I liked uh, about it that I uh, as well is the the fact that it is a game that um, is conducive to people who do just have you know a few minutes here, a few minutes there, who just want to do uh, you know a run or two when they have a few minutes, or if you do want to dig in and say no, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna play this for a few hours at a time, you have that means as well, and it can sort of support both of those right. uh, those right. types of play styles, which is something. Uh, um, that I liked about it as well. And I guess, cause I, I know you're sort of bigger, uh, your grand scope idea with this mm -hmm. thing when you were running the Kickstarter was to turn it into that sort of Metroidvania thing yeah. in that. Do you, you know, I, I don't know how, at this point, how well Blood Alloy is done for you guys or not, but do you have, if, if it does do well enough, do you still have that ultimate goal of expanding it f into a either a larger game or keeping it in s with smaller segmented games in that universe. I really, I really do want uh, that. That still really is a dream of mine to have it turn into a Metroidvania. Right mm -hmm. now, though, like um, what what would need to happen is one, I need like a break because because sure. let me tell any <laughs> any you potential indie developer thing and developer guys making games is hard. I hear making <laughs> games is hard. Making games without any money involved as a passion project as a passion project. Working with a remote team, with some of your team being college students, oh my god, it's a nightmare. I so bet. like, so like, uh, so so yeah, I, I I need I need some space from it. I'm actually working on um doing uh doing work on another game now called uh, Blubber Busters, um, and that's a team founded by uh, three riot artists. And let me oh. tell you, working on a gate on a team founded by artists is thoroughly good. Shit looks amazing from the get go. You're not yeah. like, oh yeah, I have a block moving around, and you can do cool things with the square. It's like, no, this guy. We already have like awesome character animations and everything. So, yeah. um, gives you a very so, yeah. good foundation for sure so, yeah, to start. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so the game I'm working for them is um, the basic pitch is like you know uh, the crocodiles and the birds that pick out stuff in the crocodile's teeth and the sharks they have the remoras that eat like the, the the parasites to clean clean out the larger animals it's basically you have a giant vet veterinary uh, space station where you're the okay. janitor and a cataclysmic event happens and you because everyone else dies you the janitor with your flamethrower that's used to burn off space space barnacles off the space station you get inadvertently promoted to head veterinarian <laughs> and you have to go inside 
the stomachs and lungs and bowels of giant space whales and huh. burn their infections off personally from inside inside out. So like, oh, this this whale is complaining of a headache, and you're like, oh, let's go venture into your cranium with my flamethrower and kill your headache because they're you know that actually sounds kind of rad. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. yeah, one of the ideas that they're talking about is like. We want to have uh, one of the space whales has like a, some severe digestive problems, and uh, you go in there, and there's like a city li- city living in his bowels, and you have to like <laughs> help evacuate like the, all the people being like, oh my god, there's a flood of diarrhea coming. This is that, terrible. That, I don't. Yeah, out. you know, this sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you you can, yeah. you can check you can check it out. Blubberbustersgame.com. We have a uh, teaser trailer up. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's okay. a it's a it's a very um, uh, one of our tech artists is uh, one of the artists on Ori and the Blind Forest. So like, imagine, imagine that's like, some pedigree right there. Yeah, so <laughs> imagine, imagine like Rayman, uh, Rayman comic book hand art, uh, illustrated style with some of the Ori and the Blind Forest like artistic style. You you if you check out the YouTube, um, you can you can see. Um, wow. And uh, and yeah, I'm really excited to be working on that. And so like once that that game gets out, um, you know, I'd uh, then hopefully Blood Alley would have been out and like accumulated some uh, some funding to you know pay off the the money that I've invested into the company over the past couple of years get everyone like a paycheck or two and <laughs> um and yeah I'd li- I'd really like to carry that idea of like uh fleshing out blood alloy to fruition but it's kind of, it's kind of like the wait and see thing you know like it, like yeah. likewise you know um we'll we'll need, need some space for man to see what my work schedule holds but like you know I sure. still like still the plans are to launch it on consoles cuz like all the yeah. work is there I really want to do that um, and, uh, and there's definitely yeah. nothing, you know, I, I, I follow the, the, I'm principally a PC gamer, but I own all the, the consoles as well. And yeah. I play a lot of stuff there and there's, there's definitely not a lot on consoles I can think of that are kind of like that. So you, yeah, you, know, you might be able to find an interesting audience there. And what's uh, nice is that, um, you know, Xbox, Xbox, uh, and Microsoft have actually done, done like a really good job of, um, courting the indie game scene. But, um, I've heard that, but, uh, the Xbox live store is actually like. You know, Steam, you could release a game on Steam and, like, if a tree falls in the woods, no one hears it, you know? Like, yeah. no, like you know, yeah. that's totally possible. Whereas the Xbox Store is just, like, there's stuff on there, but it's not nearly, like, the same, like, flood of bullshit. It's not crowded like, like that, no. Yeah, so so, yeah. so there's there's so there's, uh, there's a potential audience look there, you know? If, if yeah. we get, like, a fucking, like, pretty modest, like, two to 5,000 people on Xbox or PlayStation 4 to, like, get interested in the game and buy it. Like, dude, that's basically re- recouping the cost there. So You've done it's, all it's, right, yeah. It's, 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 something, it's something to think about, you know? Like, yeah, it's definitely sure. not like, yeah, just hit the button and yeah. <laughs> take care of it. Because uh, uh, consoles, you have to go through, like, a pretty brutal um, certification process. I've and, heard of this, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so, like, some of the certifications are, like, no-brainer. It's, like, on Xbox... Uh, for all your games, A has to mean go forward, and B has to mean go back. Like, like, like very, in menus, yeah. Yeah, very, yeah. very straightforward. But they also can get, like, super, super, like, convoluted. Be like, oh, if you have, like, an on- online game with, like, two more players, and one player is the host, and the client disconnects, then you have to display this message. But if the yeah. host disconnects, the clients have to see this message. And it's, like, very, very regulated. Hopefully we don't have to contend yeah, yeah. with a lot and of people, those. And people have said something, like, because I know there are companies who, like, actually basically consult on stuff like that because there are companies who have said like yeah they rejected our cert because the message that you're supposed to display when you unplug the controller like we we didn't write it exactly the way their documentation yep. said to so they were like nope yep. Yep. <laughs> even though it clearly said the same thing you know it's that level of strict which I, I suppose when you're trying to maintain some kind of continuity in your system kind of yep. makes sense to a degree but yeah so, I can see so you want to you want to hear a fun story so sure. you know, uh, so you know, even the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. What happens if you hit the PlayStation button or the Xbox button on the controller? It it pops up like, oh, here's the Xbox shell. It's clear that like there's like the op- the quote unquote operating system running in the background, right? So yeah. You, like quit your game, check your friends, check your list, and whatever. Same thing for the Wii, right? You hit the Wii button, it goes, ding, ding, and then you see yeah. the Wii menu. What's funny is that that image. And those assets of like a ding ding, the Wii menu and like the volume of yeah, your, yeah. the volume and the battery power of all your thing, all those things are there to solely give an illusion that the Wii is simultaneously running an operating system in the background. It's not actually. All those art assets are baked directly into the game. 
So it's and just pictures. It's did baked directly into the game, and it is an <laughs> automatic fail if anything related to those images is like if you're on the wrong resolution and it scale properly. Anything to like, oh uh, my god, fuck up that illusion is automatic fail because they don't want you to let you see that. They they want to preserve the idea that like, oh yeah, the Wii is the Wii's running its own operating system. It's not. It's not. Do it's not just, peek behind the curtain. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so like yeah, sometimes wow. companies can be really, really tough like that. So that's crazy. Holy jeez. Uh, no, yeah. the, the the things that the things that you learn, the things that <laughs> Nintendo. I'm sure. Learn. Yeah, things that I and that's you see. I you see. That's the thing. Like I've never developed a game in my life. I've I w- when I was young, I had aspirations of getting into game development, and then I learned that I was bad at both math and art. So I was kind of <laughs> like, well, I'm gonna yeah. do IT instead. Yeah. But the the thing that. Uh, you know, I, I still find the the sort of process behind this stuff fascinating. Yeah, I, I find it fascinating. You get a lot of these things that come out during like the live shows the Giant Bomb does during E3 mm-hmm. as well, where you hear these mm-hmm. developers that talk about this weird, like you said, this technical behind the curtain stuff, like the fact that, yeah, the Wii menu is actually not an operating system. It's an illusion. Like, I just find that stuff fascinating to hear about yeah. like all yeah, the crazy it, illusions like, that I no did, one's allowed to talk about but that everyone knows just amongst themselves yeah yeah I know? Did, that, that, that kind of stuff i didn't i didn't know either and it's 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 weird how some like working games for like i've worked in games for five years in AAA and three years as an independent so like working in games like it's weird how like you, you i like so I, I'm lucky that I can still play games and enjoy them, but mm-hmm. some people like so I totally hear some people like, yeah, at the end of my day, I can't like play games because you, you, you know you know too much, game, yeah. you know, like yeah. you, you just everything you see, you can see like all the cogs yeah. turning behind yeah. the curtain, and um, and I and can yet, appreciate that. It's hard to turn off, uh, especially with I imagine the mindset a lot of designers and developers have to have. It would be very hard to turn off your analytical brain when you just want to sit down yeah. and play something, but you're you can't because your brain is consciously analyzing. You know, it sees the matrix in the right. background, yeah, yeah, right? And yeah. you're just so like, <laughs> my my yeah. little brother is also in in games, and he spent uh, he worked at uh, he worked a summer at Harmonix for me, and then he went to uh, Blizzard, uh, not Blizzard. Oh, sorry, he went. Well, he's at Blizzard now, um, but mm-hmm. he went to Bethesda, and he okay. worked on he did uh, quality assurance on Skyrim and on Fallout New Vegas. Okay. Um, and so hearing his stories were very amusing because he was lucky in that he was like, um, even though he was doing quality assurance, he was like a systems tester. He was, I think he was doing um, combat and AI for Skyrim. So when the game... And those are two very big things in yeah. that game. <laughs> yeah. So luckily when the game actually came out, um, he was still able to play it because he was like, this is all new to me. Like I didn't have mm. to like run through the quest like a million times. What he did do, he was... Uh, like inventing these hilariously like weird scenarios with the spells in Skyrim. So like what one thing that he did was he was like, okay, um, fuck, what did he do? He he ca- he he killed a, bud, a whole town full of people, and um, he took their corpses and he threw them down into the river, and he, <laughs> he so there was a, like the whole lake bed is just filled with corpses, and then he used the revive dead spell. So they all like kind of shambled up, and the, so because so, he wanted to see whether they would walk on the floor or where they would swim or float to the whatever, and they all just walked along the floor. So it was like totally out of that scene in Pirates of the Caribbean where the skeletons are like tromping along the seabed and they're all like, <laughs> like and like fighting shit like along the seabed. That's like, pretty you know, great. So like yeah, some of the some of the funny stuff that you get you uh, you discover in there. I I think like I'm glad I never had to work uh, quality assurance on a game like that like working quality yeah. assurance at harmonics was uh, actually in a lot of ways a blessing because the act of testing har- a game at harmonics is actually remarkably similar to playing it because it's like yeah. how, do you, how do you break like you know playing a guitar you, you play the guitar maybe you activate overdrive in this way or like you, yeah you know, it, it, it's, it's you, you uh, have to replay that the same song a myriad different ways oh, which yes. can be kind of entertaining in its own way I yeah but think. you're still you're still playing the song whereas like yeah if you're, if you're working on halo what do you yeah. do with halo you're like oh well i guess your job today is to test all the doors Test yeah. all the doors, throw grenades at all the doors, make sure all yeah. others like, oh my god, I want to kill myself, you know? And I mean, I'm, amplify that by a million when you're talking about any open world game, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I can't, absolutely. I have thought about that before, and I'm like, the number of permutations and, and things, I mean, it's the funny thing, sort of janky open world games in their own way or their own source of entertainment, because people, you know, there, how many YouTube videos are there of hilarious, like, engine yeah. things that happen in Bethesda games or, or in GTA V, but at the same time, trying to minimize those in games of that 
scale. I'm I'm just like that must be soul destroying. I can't even imagine. So it, it's it's tough because I think it's it's it, it yes yes and no because I think it's also totally on the company you know and mm-hmm. I got like a little bit of view into um into Bethesda and um and like Bethesda clearly has their work cut out for them because they make such big games. But yes. here's here's like an element of something I read I read uh. I read, I think, like in an article a few days ago, and it was pointing out that, like, um, you know, uh, for games with a lot of lore, like, um, what's a like a really? Did you play Planescape Torment uh, way back in the day on DOS? Uh, some of it, yeah. I, but that's a game I have on my list to, to go through in its entirety yeah. someday. So, but yeah, I know what you mean, though. So totally worth it. But you know, it's yeah. a lot of really story-heavy games. It's oh, yes. like Dragon Age. Dragon Age, perfect yes. example. You know, Dragon Age has a very clearly defined universe with very clearly defined characters, and it's very clear everything about the game is clear that they're working on this uh, this source, the source of fiction that's um, David Guidar, I think. David Gator, David Gator, I think is his Gator, name. Yeah. Gator wrote. Um, you know, yeah. whereas for Skyrim, and this comes, this becomes apparent in some of their quests. The Skyrim team is just kind of like, oh, we'll just release content, and then we'll let fans write the wiki and then we'll base our future work off of that wiki so yeah. it's so and with that there's a little bit of game of telephone going on and then there's there are some uh there's some unfortunate bugs and inconsistency and it's really like it's kind of impossible to do like a fully realized world like with that game of like kind of developer uh player telephone you know like there was mm-hmm. there's one quest in skyrim that um there's this guy who is uh clearly mentally disabled and like there's one quest where um, you find his sister's corpse, and then you have this the moral dilemma of like, oh, do I tell him that his sister is dead, or do I tell him everything is fine? And then I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what to do about this quest, so I just kind of left him alone. And then I did um, the uh, assassin skilled quests, and one of the assassin mm-hmm. skilled quests is to kill him. And I got that quest. I was like, oh shit, I don't want to kill him yet. I need to, I need to go finish that other quest first. <laughs> so I went to talk to him. And I cannot talk to him to tell him about his sister anymore. The dialogue Aww. just over perfect. And so so I wound up killing him, but now I have that quest. Oh, go talk to so and so. And it won't like register. It won't clear. I, like, can't, I can't make it go away. I'm just like, oh no. You live with that. You the live o- with that o- pain. The O C D in me. I just like I just want to clear yeah, out my Those quest games list. are bad for that. Yeah. <laughs> So, that's how people spend a thousand hours in those things because they walk around and they just keep getting yeah. thrown more stuff and they're like well I have to beat this now Yeah, I, yeah. I had that problem with The Witcher 3 when that came out which is a so, game that I put a hundred hours into and I haven't even touched the second expansion yet is oh, because dude, I wander around so uh, I'm waiting till I get a new GPU before, so I can turn the game up to full blast before I start the, this, the blood and wine but yeah, yeah. yeah like The Witcher is the worst for that because you're walking around it's the like map. notice board and buy five more yeah no notice board or this cave appeared or this yeah. other thing and i'm just like god on- damn it i it, it, i, I it, on my way to walk but from one objective for a quest to another i'll like yep. start and do yep. 30 others and i'm yep. like Shit, mm. <laughs> so so th- this this is this is a quest in the in the new one it's not a spoiler because i'll just tell you like the premise of the quest mm-hmm. i was like i was playing the new one i was like oh i'm just i need a fucking I need to finish this thing and go to bed. And there's there's a farmer yelling, "Help! Help!" And he, I'm like, "All right, I'll fucking I'll talk Fine, to you." Whatever. And what? it was just this like, won't take long. Yeah. And this guy is like, uh, "I'm a woodcutter. I started. I uh, hacked at this tree with my axe, and this tree started gushing human blood." And I was like, "Oh well, shit! Then. This is awesome already. What what a great quest!" <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, like you know, two and a half hours later, I'm like, I need to go to sleep." <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, and that starts a chain of like nine other quests that takes like yeah. a day. Okay. Yeah, no, the, I know, that, and that's uh, the Witcher three for that. And I think um, uh, once you get over the first major, like first like three or four hours of New Vegas, um, mm-hmm. New Vegas does that amazingly. Like, the it first does. like I the love first, New Vegas. First like three or four hours, New Vegas are kind of. Like they don't have like a lot of great direction. You're kind of wondering around what to do, and then like the world just opens up, and then yeah. you're like, oh, I'll go to this new location. Oh, there are these people to talk to, and then I get these new quests. I have to go to that, and then you start like mentally planning out your to do list, and that's how you know you're sunk. You're just yeah. you're just dead meat. You're like yeah. any productivity. You're like, oh, I'm gonna do here, and I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do that, and you just yeah. like, I was just like, oh, it's it's so new. New Vegas yeah. is like by far and away my favorite game made in the game gamebrio engine and i still need yeah. a i i still haven't yeah. played all the new vegas dlc what i need to do is i need to um i need to download some of those awesome mods uh for new vegas the ones yeah. that like 
um, there's one mod that like changed your uh, it, it it like mapped grenades to like you know a button. So and then it changed your crosshair dynamically to reflect like you know the aim and spread of your uh, oh, okay your gun. Yeah, yeah. And so even just that just made it feel like a much more like viable first person shooter. Um, so I'll, like I didn't need to download those and I need to play through the DLC just because like New Vegas had me laughing on my ass yeah like just so many did. times like that um that fucking uh super mutant where where he's he really loves his skull and he thinks the skull is talking to him and yes. he's be like dude it's just a skull and he'll be like i don't know what you're trying to pull but stop it seriously yeah. <laughs> and i was just like I, I i i would love it's never ever going to happen but i would so love obsidian to get another crack oh at making yeah. you know either a fallout or even an elder scrolls thing because they would just do so many clear, amazing things with it's it. it's so clear that they're the masters of the yeah. that P, they you really know? are and i still have you know another game another game i did back on kickstarter i still have friggin pillars of eternity installed yep. which i haven't even touched yet and i i know i'm going to enjoy the hell out of that i'm just like i need a time when i can dedicate a yeah. stupid number of hours I've, to this i've heard nothing but good things about pillars of eternity and divinity and original sin yeah, um, and dude, I haven't even fucking. Uh, I I know the twist to it, but to this day, I've never played Kotor. I st- oh, okay. I, st- I still. I, I have play not played Kotor. the second one. I've beaten the first one. Mm-hmm. The second one now they actually incorporated that mod that fixes the ending yeah. into Steam Workshop, and that yeah. is that is something I absolutely do intend to play uh, at some point. Because yeah, yeah. I, I the the first Kotor was 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 something else. I, yeah, and yeah, I've heard the second one. The second one was good up until the ending, and now they fixed the ending. So yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. Yep. So, so I, I wanted to ask you actually, just because we we were kind of talking about this before, is that you know. One of the, the the things that you've talked about, um, and this is a problem I've heard from basically, uh, well, a lot of indie devs in general, and actually all of the ones that I've I've talked to for this series as well, is the the problem, especially on Steam with discoverability, uh, yeah. which is the fact that there are a billion and one games coming out every single day, and mm-hmm. you know a lot of them are hot garbage, and yeah. uh, you know, and even even if you took all the ones out that are completely completely crap, they're still uh, so much coming out that it's extremely yeah. hard to get noticed. Yeah. And it's kind of every, interesting. Every, be- like everyone has their, their, uh, their, uh, backlog of shame. Everyone does yeah. it. Like I told like, well, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if, if, if no one could buy, like if steam's like purchasing ability went down for like, you know, three weeks, it's not like anyone would be like, man, I just don't have anything to play. <laughs> you know? I don't like, have anything to buy, but I have lots yeah. to play. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, well, and the problem that I found, you know, is a lot of developers saying too, that it's even if, even if you're dealing with s- people coming to steam who have nothing to play is that it mm-hmm. still can be very hard to get noticed because you get pushed off the front page so quickly and you you know, so many people's purchasing decisions are made from there and everything else. And it was interesting because, well, the, the way I found out about you actually is um, uh, I found I found out about Blood, Oi, Blood Alloy through uh, Tom at uh, Evolve PR, which yep. I had just gotten involved with as a, a YouTuber at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found out about it through there. And it's interesting because they and I didn't know this until after I did the video that uh, um, your publisher, which is, I guess, are they called Nikidu? Enkidu. Enkidu, Enkidu is yeah, actually Tom, they're Tom actually the, the same company, right? Like yeah. that's evolved branching out into that. So, um, and I think they're they're separate companies. But Tom Tom Ole is obviously you know he's involved yeah. PR, but he's, he's also co founder right? of yeah. Enkidu. So like you know a lot of okay. a lot of Enkidu's marketing. Uh, there's ties marketing there. power is is tied directly to evolve pr so so, so uh, i i'm wondering like what what was because in keto is is fairly new they've been putting out yeah. several several games lately uh i just i did a video last week on breached which was also done by them or published mm-hmm. by them at least and uh i found that kind of interesting that they have this this sort of interesting um cross pollination between the 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 promotion element and the the publishing element of games which is is something i always thought would happen eventually especially in yeah. the, the smaller game space but how did you how did you guys get connected with them and what's what's uh, that sort of twitter, been like working in twitter. that non traditional model <laughs> twitter it's, really it's, it's li- like it, it you know old, old old farts in particular love to poo poo social media uh I both, do <laughs> both, both of my programming <laughs> contracts for the Blood Busters game I'm working on, all the people that I've found to work on Blood Eye, all that's and you know NQ do finding me, all that stuff has occurred either on Facebook or Twitter. You know, <laughs> like what what are you you know use LinkedIn? Ugh, LinkedIn can go <laughs> screw itself. Yeah. Um, but no, they, they uh, what's it? Um, 
my my wife is actually still at Harmonix. Uh, she's a product manager there, so she actually meets um, a fair number of people. And then you know, I have my own circle, and actually, we have like a lot of like cross group circle poll- pollination, just because mm-hmm. you know she's she's more on the uh, publishing and product managing side, so she meets a certain group of people there, and I'm more on the developer side. So sure. I meet you know my group of people. But it turned out that um, this girl uh, Becky Taylor, she started working for Encuda as a contractor, and she knows my wife and she knows me on Twitter and she's seen, you know, blood alloy development gifts and she, you know, pitched me to them. And then, then they reached out to me and we had some wow. uh, conversations back and forth. And, um, you know, and model model is, um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a great model for, uh, for developers. If you don't need funding, cause they're, they're, they're small enough that they, you know, they're not. If you if you need like you know like a hundred thousand dollars for your funding, they're not they're not your guy. Don't don't go right. They're not going to bankroll you, yeah. but they're just going to help you but, take an existing thing and get it out there. Yeah, absolutely. And they're and they're right. great for that because you know they have um they have uh they have you know Tom Ole who's who's known and respected, yes. um and he he clearly knows his shit. Um, and they'll they'll help you they'll help you with marketing and um and their the t- terms of their contract are very very modest and geared. Uh, favorably towards the uh, towards the developer, you know. So for a lot of publishers, you'll try to sign a publishing deal, and they'll like sneak in a line there, being like, "Oh yeah, uh, we're gonna get IP rights from this," and you're like, "No, fuck you, go. For it. You're not <laughs> taking my IP." Or another, uh, some <laughs> Your other children is ours now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And <laughs> some other uh, publishers, what they'll do is. Um, They'll be like, oh, yeah, we'll uh, provide QA support. You know, that's something that will involve in this contract. Well, and then what happens is they'll hire a QA company that gets paid by the bug. And so you get overloaded oh. with bugs that are fucking useless. They're like, oh, this, uh, the title screen, this line is off by three pixels. And you're like, oh, thanks. That, that, thanks. Thanks for pointing that one out to me. That was, that was really important. Yeah. So, so there's, whole, there's a lot of ways that, you know, publisher uh publishers can try to screw you to be honest yeah. um and enkidu is uh, has been like very straightforward very honest and um you know and, and I, I appreciate the work that they're doing and yeah they're 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 already their their catalog is relatively small but they're aggressively pursuing some of the small guys and yeah they're they're yeah. pushing shit out you know while it's the other games and, they're, and they're not and they're not pigeonholing anything like you know yeah. blood alloy and breach they pretty much couldn't be any further apart but they're yeah. both and very they're all, interesting in their own way and they're know? also uh, publishing uh hollow bunnies hollow bunnies yes. had a like a very small kickstarter but you know that's like hollow bunnies and blood alloy basically the what do they have in common uh, we're both t- pixel art and 2d like that's that's it um <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no, they, yeah. they they do good work, and and, and uh, if any if any of you guys want to, um, if any indie developers here are, that are listening right now, you want to talk to me about Inky doing, you'll feel free to hit me up. Um, you know, happy to talk more about them, talk them up, or you can just hey, just look up uh, what, what's Tom's uh, to, Tom evolve. I think Tom it's Tom either Tom evolve or Tom underscore evolve is yeah, uh, is says, Tom Olay. Yeah, yeah, it's so, so yeah I've only interacted with him a few times, but yeah, I, one thing I've really liked about Evolve is that they have been. Uh, They've been very nice to deal with, even as a YouTuber with you know yeah. less than a thousand subs, who is less than a grain of sand in the YouTube universe. Yeah, they no, don't, absolutely. you know, he he doesn't go. Oh God, I don't want. Why do what? Go away. You you yeah. bother me. He, he, you know, they've has, never been has, like that. They've been really great to he, deal with. He's got a lot of good uh, infrastructure to help help weed that stuff out. Because like, yeah, it's it's any anyone first starting out, be it indie development or content development for youtube or like blog development all that stuff is fucking hard because you're just not only competing it with each other you're also competing against virulent garbage <laughs> like yes, i get i get be like uh i get um emails from me like oh i'm blah 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 owner of this youtube channel link here can you give me some keys and i'm like oh shit this person has five million subscribers blah blah, blah. and i'm like what's uh, i check the contact email i'm like is this hmm. right? And I'll be like, hey, can you, uh, sure, I'm happy to do that. Can you tweet at me from your official account to let me know yeah. that you know, and then didn't ever hear anything back. And I'm just like, oh, I well, was there's a hoping. hilarious, uh, there's been a, there was a hilarious story and I've seen this before about, uh, the guy, um, I forget which guy it is, but the guy from Devolver Digital who Fort does Park, the yeah, Fort yeah. Parker thing, <laughs> who, who does <laughs> these things on Twitter where he gets unsolicited yourself. and he's like, all right, let's see where this goes. And I'm like, oh, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> he just yeah, smacks down these fake sites. It's, yeah. oh, it's, it's wonderful. And, and yeah, and that's, that's the thing is that, you know, I can uh, agree with you totally. I mean, I've been doing YouTube now for good Christ over three years and, um, 
it's like been uh, fight for it, every sub. Oh, fight absolutely. And it, so it's been hard. brutal. Like I, I, you know, I never, I, I thought about doing YouTube as a career for probably the uh, maybe five seconds or so, but yeah. it was always going to be a hobby thing. But I honestly thought at the time that it would grow a lot quicker than it has. And it, you do get a little bitter sometimes when you see like, you know, there was the big controversy this week about the guys oh, the who CSO are making a ton guys. of money. Yeah. Who have oh these God. massive channels that make tons of money and now they're scamming people in CSGO. And I'm just like, man, why do they get to succeed? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? The world and is a horrible and unfair and cruel uh, place. <laughs> and fucking, yeah. uh, fucking, uh, the, when Goat Simulator comes out, of course, like fucking Rock Simulator 2014 gets through oh, the simulators. Green light in like three, three grass growing simulator yeah. gets. I'm like, really, guys? I had to fight for like a year to get Blood Alley through Steam I know. Green Light. Yeah, I know, and it's yeah, and it's it, it is it is definitely frustrating sometimes. But yeah, it's one of those things where you know. What I make is not not you know not on the same scale of what of what guys like you do, but it's the same thing in that you know you love doing it and you're like yeah if I if I persist at this long enough and I at least have a have a means to pay the bills on the the back end which I do because you know I work in managed IT so I'm able yep. I'm able to do that you know I'm like yeah I can just keep plugging away at this and eventually it'll it'll get there and yeah. my sub count goes up a little bit more every one you know every every little bit and I'm like you know I and uh, there was a point when it was growing so slowly when I was new where I was like, you know, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to hit 200 subs and yeah, yeah, I'm about to cross a thousand and I'm like, yeah, compared to the total biscuits or the PewDiePie's or the game grumps or whatever, it's very small, but I'm like, you know, a thousand people, that's a pretty damn big auditorium yeah. full of people right there. Yeah, you know, absolutely. it's not nothing for sure. And it's, uh, you know, and, and yeah. And if, it you know it pays dividends in other ways obviously you know if you if you did uh, decide no i don't you know i don't want to do games on uh, independently anymore you've still gotten you know such a a, a ton of uh, other skills and abilities from right. that and that can even, translate into other things even right? in the youtube stuff like dude like you could you you could sign up for like if you wanted to get into games you have a portfolio to be like hey i want to sign up for a community manager position at a triple a company like that's yeah. totally possible like hey yeah. move move to montreal, montreal and go work for ubisoft that's that's something that like well, is that's in the, the thing montreal is an hour and a half from here so you know it's uh, it's funny because there's there's actually a, a decent and growing indie scene in Ottawa now, but we we had a we only had a couple of big studios in this town that both shut down a few years ago. But yeah, like the one of the biggest hubs for North America is just over just across the pond in Quebec. You know, it's very mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to get to. And yeah, I've thought about it before. And yeah, that this is paid dividends as well. And that you know, I have some social anxiety stuff in that, and having to talk to a, a crowd and things like that through YouTube has just made that whole thing so much better yeah. in its own yeah. way. And you know. It's uh, and it's it. That's the one thing I like about whether it's whether it's covering games or making them is that we do now live in this time where the ability to do so, you know, if you want to try it, there's a lot of game engines out there that unless yeah. you're making money now uh, off them are basically free for all yeah. intents and purposes. Yep. And uh, yeah. you can just be like, it, it, you think you can make a game? Well, there's the tools. See if you can. Yeah. Yep. And if you and, can, and, hey, where you go? <laughs> and and that and that and that that's the thing. It's like the th there's still definitely a bar. Absolutely. But the bar sure. has been lowered so much that really and it, it's it's kind of a blessing now is because, you you know, you're like, oh, I have a game idea. I'm like, thumbs up. You have an idea. Congratulations. Keep Everybody going. does. Spend, <laughs> spend, 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 spend a week. Download Uni. See if you can make a prototype. Once you have the prototype, then then see if I'm interested And in the same thing with YouTube. Like, oh, I have an idea for a channel, dude. So you have your your laptop has a camera built into it. Start recording something. And what's nice yeah. is once you do like put in the chops to you know just show that you're not like random chump, uh, you know number five thousand. Like I'm community... gonna play Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, no one the, does that. <laughs> the, the community is so supportive because we're yeah. all in this together. You know, but on, on both sides of the equation, you're just like we all know that life is shit. And everything yeah. is hard, <laughs> and that, you, know, <laughs> you, you just try to help each other out, which is yeah. which has been really great. Both both on like, it's not like fluffy like hugs and kisses either. You know, um, no. Jed Jed Whitaker of of Destructoid, he um, like uh, he he's a really friendly guy, and um, 
and I it just from personal connections, I was like, hey, Jed, you want to review my game? He gave me a 6.5. A very honest review. I'm mm-hmm. sad that we didn't get more, but everything was very honest. And I was like, dude, I'm grateful for the opportunity and for yeah. the feedback that you gave me. Like, that's really valuable. And really, what more can you what more can you could you ask for someone, you know? Yeah. And so, even if um, he didn't give you the, as high a score, you know, there, there, you know, some people may look at that and go, yeah, well, he thought it was so so. But these screenshots look really rad. Maybe I'll go give this a shot. And, and, you know? and there's there's some other things. Um, um, was it what the fuck was it? There's oh, uh, Mighty Number no. Nine. Mighty yeah. Number no. Nine got four million dollars in funding and got a six. And mm-hmm. but I got zero funding and we got a six point yeah. five. I yeah. can live with this. I'm okay. And that's with the this. thing. Like I had a few criticisms about Blood Alloy, but like a lot of other people. And as someone who backed Mighty Number no. Nine, I tore that game a new one on my <laughs> channel recently. So like, I was kind of like, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, well, and it all it all depends, right? You know, it it all depends on both. Uh, management and just and just you know scope in general in many cases yeah. too right yeah. you know mighty number no. nine's problem that most people believe is that they just they they got a lot more than they expected and then they bit off more than that which is like that's yeah. apparently the same problem no. broken age had and, uh, and a lot tough? of other kickstarter problems and sometimes you know we're st- it's the I, i've always be- kind of rolled my eyes at the philosophy that people where they say less is more because i'm kind of like well no less is less but yeah. a lot of the times less and having those force constraints actually can yeah, generate absolutely. some amazing stuff you know other- when you're constrained is when you innovate right right absolutely like otherwise you have the duke nukem forever complex why was <laughs> why did duke nukem forever take so long is because um you know you you hear the the stories of what the guy did it was like you know duke the duke nukem 3d made so much money that they had unlimited yes. resources and so half-life one comes out the whole then the guy the leader the ceo of the of the 3d realms is like oh we need we need something like this another game comes out oh, we need this a new com- yeah. you know computer engine technology comes out oh we need to erupt and so yeah unlimited resources can screw you whereas like um lucas pope uh the guy who made papers please he's making a game that literally is just black and white not even just yeah. pixel art black and white and that's like a yeah. extremely harsh um artistic uh art- artistic um limitation but it's really uh forcing a lot of creativity and with mighty number no. nine in particular i remember like i'm a huge fan Mega Man Legends uh, dork. Um, mm-hmm. So and, and and you know one of my favorite games is Mega Man X. So I was like, ooh, is this interesting? Yeah. And then uh, I I didn't back Meg, uh, Mighty Number no. Nine myself just because it was so successful. I was like, eh, I'll just get it when it comes out. Yeah. Um, but what happened was like Mighty Number no. Nine had that. Uh, I'm sure you remember from their Kickstarter page, they had that piece of promo art showing what the game would supposedly look like, and it was like <laughs> handcrafted and gorgeous and uh-huh. then the more like time went on they're like that's not what the game looks like yep. <laughs> what the hell well and you know what's hilarious is as well is uh because i i actually just recently uh evolve gave me um a code for the early access release of 20xx which is the <laughs> independently also largely one dude developed uh a game that's basically like a Mega Man roguelike Mm -hmm. Uh, for all intents and purposes and I've been doing I haven't done a video on that yet but I fired it up a little bit to do some research and I'm like this is largely made by like one or two people and it looks better than Mighty Number 9 and he's been doing that on purely early access funding I'm like what the actual hell happened here it it, it really like and I like KG. I like KG Unifin. I liked a lot yeah. of his insights. He's made a lot of good great. stuff. <laughs> but I'm just like, dude, what happened? What happened? <laughs> what happened? How could and like I like, you know, I'm friends with a lot of uh, you know, game development artists, and they were like posting screenshots of Mighty Number no. Nine. I'm like, they were like, did they not use this Photoshop tool correctly? Like this takes yeah. like five seconds to make like, this like wh- yeah. look so not so janky. And I was just like, And it, yeah. this is one of those things where, you know, it, I've heard this when I, I I listen to the giant bombcast every week and you know what, one of the things that, that Jeff Gersman has said a lot is he said, wait uh, 10 or 15 years until all the people working in the game development industry now are out of it and don't have to worry about their jobs so they can write tell-all books. Yeah. Because he said, there yeah. are going to be some it's amazing stories story. that come out of this industry. Oh, you know, yeah. uh, for people who are around at this time, it's it's going to be it's going to be a hell of a thing. <laughs> I can only imagine that. But yeah. uh 
All right. Yeah. Well, Jerry, I think I might have to let you go. My son is crying. He's probably no. I understand. Diaper. I was going to say uh, no. Well, this this has been uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for Absolutely. for chatting, man. This was a really great uh, conversation. It was really cool to hear about uh, to hear about what you guys have been up to and the, yeah, the, your, and your your journey to Blood Alloy Reborn has been quite an interesting one. Yeah, and absolutely. And if you, uh, I, you know, I, I, I invariably make friends with other indie developers on on Twitter. If you did tweet at me, I'll hit you some other guys to tweet at. You guys should be checking out. Um, if you Please guys do. haven't seen it already, uh, Manifold Gar- Garden by Willie Chur. Like, imagine mm. um, people keep comparing it to um, to Antichamber, but it's really not. It's uh, okay. like it's very very different game, but it's the kind of like infinite folding Escher worlds. The, uh, puzzle game it's a it's, it's just stupid beautiful i hate that guy because he's so nice and every time he tweets something i'm like oh but it, his story is also like super amazing because he, oh, he, yeah he's made gifts showing the game at various points during its development and you can see like in 2013 it was a fucking gray room and he's like ah this is great and he can he recall you know he calls like oh people are just angry with my game just because they don't get it and you know and then you know he he's had the same uh, philosophy except executed like flawlessly over two and a half three years where he's just relentlessly polishing the aesthetics and the gameplay and, wow. and, th- and I had to wonder why if this is it happened to Mighty Number no. 9 I feel like the biggest mistake you can commit as a developer is for a player to tell you something and you be to like brush that off it's like yeah, yeah they don't know it's like dude no playtest feedback is the most valuable thing and with Wi- Willie Willie Chur of uh, Manifold Gar- Garden He's again like a one man team, but he's like remade his tutorial level like 20 or 30 times. Like every single time, he's completely remaking it. And I'm like, dude, that kind of dedication is going to pay off, especially in a puzzle game. You know, and so I'm. I'll have to check that out because I've heard the name, but I didn't know much about it. But that sounds like something that would be cool. Sony has been pushing out, pushing it because it's made in Unity, and he's he's already like, yeah, it's going to be on PS4 and everything. So yeah, okay, cool. You should you should definitely check it out. Definitely, yeah, for sure. Thanks, thanks so much for having me, man. Absolutely, no. This was this was a great chat, and uh, yeah, if you guys do want to check out Blood Alloy Reborn, it is on Steam right now. It will probably it will be on consoles one day. (laughs) Yeah, one uh, one day Uh, for sure. Uh, But yeah, check it out. It's cool. I did. I if did the do Steam a video summer sale is going on. It's probably still on sale. <laughs> it might be, yeah. And uh, yeah, I did do a video on the game. If you want to check it out, it is of an earlier version that doesn't have leaderboards and stuff. So that's that criticism is uh, is invalid now. But that's uh, that's not a problem. It's good to <laughs> see that it's, that it's, that it's moved up. That's what. That's I'm all right. No, <laughs> that's always good. I prefer to see that. So. Uh, But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, If you did enjoy this, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel and telling other people. That does help me out a great deal. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. And uh, hopefully in in another few weeks, we'll have another another great indie dev to chat with. So uh, thanks again, Frank. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. Thanks, guys.